Yo, Shortbox Nation, this is Botter, and I'm here to tell you right now that con season starts early this year with the return of Northeast Florida's premier anime, comic book, and sci-fi event, Collective Con. That's right, Northeast Florida's largest pop culture convention returns for its 10th year on March 8th through the 10th at the Prime Osborne Center in Jacksonville, Florida. 10 years of Collective Con, they're pulling all the stops out to make sure this is a can't-miss event. And the guest list they got going, don't even get me started on the guest list. I mean, they've got A-list celebrity guests and voice actors from some of your favorite movies, anime, and video games like Elijah Wood and Sean Ashton, Ray Park, Trisha Helfer, Ross Marquin, Max Middleman, and bo herself would be there, Katie Sackhoff. Tell me what other convention is giving you the opportunity to meet Frodo and Sam from Lord of the Rings, Darth Maul, and One Punch Man all under the same roof. Only at Collective Con. And if you're looking to get some of your favorite comics signed, or if you want to get an original sketch from some of the best comic artists in the world, well, you're in luck because there'll be plenty of comic and creator guests there, like DC comic artist extraordinaire Clay Mann, Harvey Award nominated illustrator John Taylor Christopher, Marvel and DC cover artist Chris Stevens, and acclaimed Star Wars author Timothy Zahn. They'll all be at Collective Con this year. And if you're looking to bring the family or if you want to make a weekend out of it, you're in luck because there'll be so much going on at CollectiveCon that weekend in the form of vendors, fan panels, video game tournaments, cosplay contests, after parties, and a bunch of fan events. You can purchase single and three-day weekend passes now using the link in this episode's show notes or by going to CollectiveCon.com to book your tickets and hotel. Buy your tickets now, and I'll see you at CollectiveCon, March 8th through the 10th. Now let's start the show. Oh, this is a... This is a nice little setup in here, man. Wow. This is my first time being in, in this office. Dang. Yo, sure. See if you can spot everything that uh, represents Botter. Everything in here represents Botter. Yeah, very true. There is no discussion thread on Reddit right now. I'm telling you, it's on, it's on our comics. I I'm, for what? She's, um, I looked at comic books. She's looking for um, like a discussion thread on, on Reddit. Oh, here's about the thing. It. You won't find it because everybody's talking about Amazing Spider-Man 26. Just go to regular Spider. Just go to Spider-Man Reddit. I did. I didn't have it. Marvel didn't have it. <laughs> she, said, she said she found a bunch of R-rated Spider-Man stuff. A lot. <laughs> a, a, a lot of R-rated? <laughs> Not suitable for work. Oh, oh yeah. A lot. <laughs> Spider-Man back here. He's like, getting bent over, bending something over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the spider verse for real <laughs> <laughs> arachnid style yeah show you my spider style all right i guess first and foremost a cheers to walt being in town cheers, all right, cheers to, to walt. walt being in town first walt first time walt is in the short bo- new short box studio and first time walt is recording with Blythe. and i guess the first time we're all recording together there we go first time i'm in this room <laughs> <laughs> we just seen this movie right what the what, what, what's I just, subreddit? I just went to, I just went to the Spider Man. I looked at it. Just go to Spider Man subreddit. Uh, is that a dirty subreddit you sent him to? No, no, I just went to the regular Spider Man. I just typed in Spider Man and then I went to the one that had a um a hundred or thousands of hundreds of thousands of people in it, and there we go. Let's do a little. Uh, let's do our our routine warm up. So hyper fast, right? The trailers that we got, we got one, two, three, six trailers, right? We got the trailer for Elemental. We got a trailer for Blue Beetle. We got a trailer for the Flash movie. We got a trailer for Teenage Kraken, TMNT, and then Gran Turismo, I believe, was the last one. What was the best trailer you saw tonight? Well, um, I will give it a tie for Elementals and the Teenage Kraken. Okay. Because the Teenage Kraken was the only one I had not seen. Yeah, that was a new one for us. Uh, Drew, what was your favorite trailer? Honestly, Teenage Kraken. That's two votes for Tina. What was it about Tina's Kraken that got your attention? Just looking interesting. It looked really fun. And then um, the, the design looks cool. Okay. All right. I like that. Life. there was no, um, this was probably the only movie where they didn't have an Indiana Jones trailer. Mm. So now you definitely got to pick a different one. What was your favorite trailer out of the uh, six we saw? I, I mean, the Ninja Turtles one. Easy. Yeah. I think I'm going to back you up on that because this, I think this was the trailer that made me, I was like, okay, yeah, we're definitely going to see this opening night in theaters. I think I was a little iffy when I seen the first trailer. I was like, are they trying to do a Into the Spider-Verse like ripoff? Like, is everyone going to be doing this? What but now that, I, I know I'm here for it. What I'm, was I'm that okay joke that Splinter said? <laughs> he was like, you ratted me out? And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Careful with that word. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was solid. 
Um, and then I think close second, Elemental looks fucking fun. I, you that know, looks so I'm fun. behind on them Pixar movies after Soul. So mm. I need to kind of sit down and go through all the other ones that kind of came out. What, what are the ones that have come out since Soul? There were, there's been three of them that they released on Disney Plus exclusively. There was one that kind of looks like the Elementals, but I think it's the Emotions. Yes. Well, that one went to, that one was in the theater. So I've seen that one. Mm. The gist of that film was that, that um the girl moved and the four different emotions that she explored the most were in her brain and she mm. was kind of dealing with all that. And she was like a like inside a, out for the inside record. out inside that out. movie. Yes. All right. And that one came out 2015. It feels Damn. like that was not that long ago. Okay. Uh, normally we'd spend a little more time on the uh, warm up and the trailers, but I think we have so much to talk about in regards to this uh, Spider-Man movie. So let's just go ahead and get things started. Um, and let me kick it off like I normally do. Yo, short box nation. Thank you guys so much for joining the show. Welcome back to the podcast. If you're new to the podcast, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to ask what took you so long. I'm just going to say welcome to the party. This is a short box podcast, the comic book talk show that brings you the best conversations about comic books and the pop culture inspired by them, just like this amazing movie. My name is Botter. I got the short box movie crew assembled once again. So, you know, I got Blythe Rumleaf on mic number two. Hello. Hello. And I got Mr. Andrew Torres here with me. Hello. And making <laughs> Mary Poppins over here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire, actually. Ooh, that was even better. Sorry about that. You know, I'm just so hyper. I'm so Spider-Man focused. I don't see no other movie references. <laughs> but making his short box studio debut here in Jack's. Uh, normally, me and Drew are the ones driving down to Orlando to visit him and giving you whoa, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're driving down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asleep in the car. <laughs> Don't give me credit. <laughs> Same. Right. Don't got, give me credit. I look out for my boy. True. <laughs> All right, let me try that again. You longtime listeners will recognize, probably have already recognized the voice. You guys know that we make a big deal anytime we have one of the original founders on the show. Ladies and gents, joining the Short Box Movie Club today is none other than Walter Gant here in Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> they love you. You're just going to bask in it? You're not going to say anything? It's about to end. Thank you for having me, Bada. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure to be here. I don't think no one has ever let the crowd, the applause ride out that long. Normally, I just cut it halfway through, but well, you deserve it. We're so happy to have you with us. And it's been a minute since we all caught a movie. I think the last movie we all caught together was that epic moment in history called Endgame, opening night. We did go see Endgame that opening night. That was the last night, one. That was the last time. That was... The second best movie we all seen together because forever the best movie we seen together, Creed, Creed One. One. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still, I still talk about I talk about that it too. moment and you know, back to the listeners. Um, you guys know the deal by now. When it comes to these movie reviews, we're gonna we're going to be spoiling the hell out of it. We just left the theater. It hasn't even been a full thirty minutes, and we immediately hopped on the mics. So full on spoilers going forward. If you haven't seen the movie, I have no idea why you press play on this episode unless you're just a glutton for punishment. But um, <laughs> starting right now, we are entering spoiler ter- territories. Nothing is off the table. We're talking about everything going on in this movie. I can't believe they killed them that quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Walt. That's a good one. All right. How about we start off like this? Um, I want to, I guess, get everyone's like initial like feelings about the movie, and then we can go into each character breakdown, and then we can give our final thoughts. But before. I get everyone's kind of like opening uh, statements. I just want to share some of the headlines um, about this movie on on Google and the different uh, news outlets reporting it. Just headlines. And I want to get an idea of how you guys feel about it, if it's accurate or not. Uh, This one comes from Sydney Morning Herald. I I got all these headlines yesterday, but they wrote, The new Spider-Man is utterly bewildering. It's all part of the plan. Rotten Tomatoes. uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse first reviews a stunning sequel on one of the best comic book movies ever, which is... You know, Rotten Tomatoes sometimes be holding back their credit, so that was pretty nice to see. And then last but not least, uh, The Verge. I like their headline a lot. Across the Spider-Verse is an animated masterpiece that upends Marvel's spider canon. And I'll share one more. IndieWire's head, uh, headline for their review. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse review, a dazzling reminder of what superhero movies can be. And just for the curious out there, because I, I like to reference it. Right now, it's sitting at a 95% tomato meter with the critic score and 98% audience score. Mm. Pretty damn 
perfect scores wow. so far on, you know, it's Thursday, 943. I doubt those numbers will go down. Pretty accurate headlines. How do you guys feel? I guess opening statements. What do you guys got for it? Life. I mean, I completely agree with everything that they just said in the headlines. I, a couple of the stand, obviously the art, um, the writing I thought was really good. It, it kind of just brings me to, I, I know that there's a lot of, I guess, theories around there being like superhero fatigue. But when you go and see a movie that's really well written, that looks great, and it doesn't even feel like it's been more than two hours that you're watching it. I, I think that that's when movies are really at its best. And so th- this movie, you know, checked all the boxes for me. Uh, the Even the, the character acting, like even though it's drawn out, like it's still, you know, very good. The voice acting is very good. Uh, I have no complaints except for that it ended, you know, as a part one. Yeah. And we got a full year to wait. I think we've got, I think it comes, um, the sequel Beyond the Spider-Verse is March 29th, 2024 is a date that I've seen, which feels way too long. Well, opening statements about the movie. It was just fantastic. And it went, like you say, the two hours felt quick because it was so much stuff kind of happening. And yeah, I enjoyed myself, man. Drew, you're a little quiet, man. Uh, no, nah, I, I was just thinking about all the hair that, like that, that movie animated hair, like it was real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was like, damn, how they get that hair to look so real? Like, what if God's so- hair was crazy? Um, the the um, Indian Spider Man's hair was crazy. He was not lying about how dope his hair was, and he doesn't use have a tear. Yeah, have a tear. P a v i t r. Spider Man India is is what IMDb's got <laughs> credit as. I'm gonna go with that. That movie was dope. It was amazing. It was like everything I wanted from a Spider-Man movie. They really went with it. They're like, hey, man, we're going to, what's a Spider-Man movie? Well, Spider-Man has to suffer. Oh, say no more. (laughs) Say no more. You know what, though? That Spider-Verse is one of my favorite, like, Spider-Man stories in general. So anytime that you bring that many different Spider-Mans from all the different universes or whatnot, you can get me to at least take a glance at it oh and they went for it it was like nothing nothing was off the table when it came to you this think your boy superior movie. spider-man gonna be in the next one i hope so come on i really they gotta so. it. my opening remarks is this that nobody asked you okay <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's not lying nobody asked me um so, be, so let me ask you this question yeah, Drew? What, uh, any opening remarks about this glad you asked that Yo, this is Botter. Sorry for interrupting this episode, but I'll keep it brief. I wanted to let you know about a massive sale we have going on over at the Shortbox store on all of our merchandise and apparel. That's theshortboxstore.bigcartel.com. You can now save 20% off your entire order using the discount code YO, Y-O-O. So if you've been waiting for the right time to finally buy that gauntlet snapback, or if you ever wanted to buy any of the shirts you see me wear on the podcast, well, now's your chance to get them for a steal. We still have a few sizes left of everything, but they won't last long and once they're gone they are gone and then i mentioned that all of our apparel is screen printed on high quality material none of that heat transfer or direct to garment stuff our shirts are some of the most comfortable ones you'll ever wear and the hats look even better in person so wear your support for the short box nation proudly knowing that you're going to look damn good doing it get to the shortboxstore.bigcartel.com as soon as you can and don't forget to use that discount code YO, Y-O-O, to save 20% off your entire order. All of this information can be found in this episode's show notes if you want to get there faster. Thanks for not pressing fast forward. Now back to the show. Damn, man. Now I'm like speechless because <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. <laughs> if the first one was a love letter to Spider-Man, you're like, Enough said. No, no other words need to be shared. Like you, you told me how much you love Spider Man, but they came back with a sequel, and you're like, "Wow, you found new ways to tell me how much you love (laughs) Spider Man." Amazing. (laughs) Like I got two love letters about one topic, and each one uh, surpassed each other. I cannot believe how much this felt both like a sequel. I was curious how much continuity there would be between uh, this one and the first one, but the, I mean, literally the the spot whole story starts out in the first one so like there's reasons to go back and revisit it and catch small things that that carried over but like the continuity was seamless and it felt like such it stands out on its own too you know the fact that fun fact 
uh, my brother Joe usually joins the Shortbox Movie Club. He don't stay for the recordings, but he enjoyed the movie, obviously. And I was surprised to hear him admit he never seen the first one. So I was, I was like, there, I was there when you found out too. Yeah, like, it blew my mind. Face. I'm like, what the fuck were you doing? It you took someone's ticket. <laughs> you spider that bitch. You we're supposed to find someone else. <laughs> but. I think it's just a testament to how strong this movie was on its own that it, it also works in reverse, where now he was like, I'm going to go home and watch the first one. You Is know? it still on Netflix? It may be on... It's on FX literally right now. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably also on either Stars or Disney. It's always... It's not on Disney Plus yet. It's always on something that you're like, I don't pay for that. Anyways, so we got our opening statements out the way. Let's work down the, the character list, but I'll give you guys a chance to, I guess, mention your favorite spider person. Let's go with that first. Was there a particular spider person that stood out to you? And then we'll, we'll each kind of share something about it. I'll go ahead and kick us off because you guys mentioned them already. But Spider-Man India, voiced by uh, Karen Sony, um, who Drew had to inform me was the cab driver in the Deadpool movies, which is fantastic. Spider-Man India was a joy mm -hmm. to like have on screen. He was super sweet, funny, confident. I love the little yo-yo uh, things that he had going on. Like, and his world too was so chaotic. I love that even when Miles and Gwen got there, well, mainly Miles, it was such a culture shock to him. He had a chance to like really like, uh, I guess for them to like portray like Indian culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like how, when he was joking about like chai tea, you know, what are you saying? <laughs> tea tea and, and non bread, <laughs> non, non bread bread. <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, I had a good time with him. Any um, thoughts about uh, Spider-Man India? Any particular scenes the or moments? The hair was great, yeah. but he should have covered it while wearing in, in the costume. That's a dead giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't even change the part. Yeah, too foolish. He's out here being too reckless. When you got good hair like that, you, like you that, have to hide it. You can be a little reckless, I guess. I but guess you have to hide it. it in the costume. All right, fair enough. So Blythe had some uh, some beef with the hair. It was too good. Well, what about no, you? No any such thing too Any good. opening? <laughs> Any thoughts or particular scenes or moments about Spider-Man India? I guess the main thing was that they tried to use Spider-Man um, 2099. Mm -hmm. That he was like, okay, this is your fault that this happened in his area. And since he didn't have that canon moment, mm -hmm. now we got to fix this thing. And I thought that was interesting. That involves his world in yeah. essence. Remind me, was Spider-Man India part of the uh, Gwen's team at the end? Yeah. Oh, he he's was. There. Which makes sense, right? He's like, damn, y'all was going to let my girl's dad die? Oh, oh right, true. Bet. Yeah. yeah, right? Like, if it would have worked out how sorry, uh, Miguel O'Hara wanted it, they would have just let that version's Gwen, his, his Gwen, his Gwen's dad's. He was supposed yeah, to die. Yeah, yeah, he was supposed to die. You get what I was trying to say. So there's motivation for him in the next movie to be like, hold up. like Because they showed, gonna... when he ran into Spot and he yep. touched Spot, they showed that death happening. Yep. So they showed that happening, and then they also showed Spider-Man, Miles Morales' dad dying. It was like, it was all inter. Those three deaths were intercut with each other. Also, the 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 funny mention was like, I think he was Spider-Man for like six months, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, wait, he got a watch already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, like, I thought that was like a really good callback. I didn't think he was. I thought that he had been Spider-Man. He was only on that team for six months. Well, I think he said he's been Spider-Man for six months. It's one of the things like he probably like first day became Spider Man and then immediately got a watch. <laughs> <laughs> Miles was like, "Damn, you gonna let him join the team?" I thought that was pretty funny. Well, who was your favorite Spider Person? I mean, it was tough. So I'm gonna name a bunch of Spider People that Did I it? liked. So number one, obviously, was Jessica Drew because mm. she was voiced by Issa Rae, and I was not expecting that at all. Wait, so you hadn't seen any of the promotion or any of the? Because I, I think she was pretty heavy on like I haven't seen any of the trailers really for that movie. Wow. For some reason, either they weren't in the movies I was watching, or I just started tuning them out after a while because I was like, I don't need to. It's kind of, I'll tell you what, real quick, just a quick sidebar away from this. Well, this is the short box. So the sidebars is like what the S stands for. This has been one of my biggest issues with the promotion of The Flash is that every trailer I see feels like they added another minute of trailer. That trailer went from like 30 seconds. That's a five, it feels like a five minute trailer half the time. That's probably a How minute. long was that trailer today? It was long enough to where I was like, okay, so... I've seen too much of this movie, and I know yeah. way too much about this movie. Yeah, I was like, okay, so Supergirl or Superwoman is going to fight Zod at the end, and that might be the big 
like big battle, but who knows? But I do agree. Trailers lately have been that tr- pretty. Not fun. all trailers. That trailer in particular is <laughs> way too spoily. So I just try not to be watching all the trailers. All I need is a teaser and the, like the one minute one. Like I didn't. Yeah. So anyway, enough of that. I'll go. I'll digress and we'll come back to that later. So I like the Jessica Drew one and Spider Punk was just just ridiculous voiced by our guy daniel kaluuya really yes sir voiced by daniel kaluuya man that's why that fool sounds so reckless okay (laughs) (laughs) so him and then the third one i like mayday man Mm -hmm. i would not have expected that why why mayday what was so great about mayday other being super adorable you know what don't even answer that that was a dumb question it's a cute baby spider it was just a ridiculous baby spider girl and think he is supposed to be like the algorithm you know because they typically kind of have maydays in some of those spider-verse comic books and you rarely get to see the baby mayday so yeah fair mayday. enough what the Walt got a big heart man he got a he is softy he is soft <laughs> all right let's use uh walt's picks to talk about jessica drew i was pleasantly surprised that like she wasn't because you know for Issa ray i think I think sometimes it's easy to be like, okay, she's going to get, like, you almost would expect her to be, like, the jokey one. Um, you know, they're going to play her really lighthearted. But she was really serious. And, like, you know, no pun intended, but, like, she was also very motherly. Like, serious motherly to, like, Gwen, and I like that That's because you were pregnant. Well, yeah, that's why I said no pun. Oh, I guess it wasn't no pun intended, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no one is going to know the pun. <laughs> and, you know, right. yeah. But you're right. she was motherly that. because she was becoming a mother. You're right. <laughs> but the dynamic between Gwen and Jessica Drew and Gwen's initial reaction being like, holy shit, you're so cool. Can you, what, what did she say? Will you adopt me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was rad. And the use of her motorcycle too. She had like a vehicle the whole time and it was using like the vehicle to fight, move around obviously, but like the fact that it was like such a, a um, seamless extension of her did she have that motorcycle on that last major spider woman run yeah, i think i feel so. like she was on a spot i feel like on a, I see on a motorcycle which when she was pregnant in what about four or five years ago yep life any uh thoughts that come to mind about uh jessica drew spider woman I, I i really liked her especially during or towards the end because i felt like she was going to turn and maybe join gwen's group but I did also, I you know, she had her moments when she was funny because there was that one line when she was talking about her husband. And she was like, yeah, he's a little corny, but he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who that is. I thought this whole time, up, up until half, uh, half the movie, that it was Miguel O'Hara. Like, because they were, I, I thought she mentioned Miguel maybe or like just the fact that like she was able to kind of like speak to him in a way. I thought maybe that was his baby. But obviously by the middle, I was like, oh, that don't make no sense. But now I'm curious. Yes. Who is the baby daddy? <laughs> who's, the baby, who is the, who's the baby dad in in the regular comic books? That's probably where I need to go. Were, were those covers that they used during the movie, or are those the actual covers of the comics? Those are actual covers of comic books, but um, they've just redone some of them. Oh, I think Walt and Drew, you guys might recognize this, but that one cover they showed where it's Miles and um, uh, Miguel O'Hara or Spider-Man 2099 on the cover... Leonardi's name was at the top corner. And Rick Leonardi, I believe, is the original artist for Spider-Man 2099. So I was like, oh, that's a cool little... That um, would be correct, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Andrew Torres. What did you think of the spot? <laughs> oh, you want to go straight to yeah, the spot? Yeah, I just want to talk about the spot. Right. I was like, I thought no, he was going to be... Segue. I honestly thought he was going to be a joke. And I like the fact that he's like, oh, no, you think I'm a joke? Watch. Voiced by our guy J- Jason Schwartzman. Mm-hmm. His character arc in this was so kind of classic Spider-Man villain, right? Oh, you think I'm a joke? Let me show you my potential. So it's not only about Miles Morales and, you know, finding his potential, but you've also got this villain that's also, like, learning the ropes and becoming stronger and And more deadly. You set him off on this path. Yes! By throwing a bagel at him. (laughs) Which is funny. Somebody threw a bagel at me. All right, you guys know I love to talk about the status of our theater, and life bringing up the bagel just reminded me. I think we had a fucking ghost with us hanging out in the theater because you guys heard the dude to our immediate right that was laughing. I mean, he just had one of them loud, kind of obnoxious laughs, right? Well, you didn't hear it? No. Wow, you probably, were way too far off. Plus, I was probably laughing when he was laughing. <laughs> I know, Blythe, you heard it. Drew, you heard him, right? Yeah, because he left and he never came back. Dude, he left and never came back. Where the fuck did this guy go? Because <laughs> he's sitting the in the extra night. seat. Was he in 13? He was. He, it was a ghost in 13. Oh, shit. 
Because that bagel scene made him. I was like, wow, this that bagel joke really <laughs> got to him. That's early in the movie. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like he left. I was like, oh, he'll be back and he's going to laugh this whole movie. Never came back. The people next to me got there like about 45 minutes, yeah. I feel Dude, like, until I the movie. I saw that. Like when they showed up, I'm like, so y'all just going to sit they down. They got there so I late hate. that I had to move my popcorn out their seat. <laughs> Damn, there was, there was definitely a butter puddle. <laughs> yeah. I was. See. I said, like, wow, at this point, why would you come to see this movie? Maybe they were sneaking in. They were fighting in the car. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. And I was like, yo, well, let's just save this night and we'll watch the rest of this movie. But to go back to Spot, I think my favorite scenes of his, I'm just going to call them like nightmare scenes where the screen went black and white, like the black and white and the flashing and like how just scary the artwork suddenly became, Um, especially when he turns all black and he's got white spots. I thought that was a cool visual representation of him, like getting darker, stronger, like more like just deadlier. Blythe, any thoughts on Spot? Not really. I thought he was pretty decent at like, I mean, you guys all said kind of, you know, the the same thought process I would have. I almost felt like he was a secondary villain to an extent hmm. to Oscar Isaac's kind of villain arc. Because he's wildly villain. Oscar Isaac is wildly villainous in this film. I was getting really scared myself when when he's talking to Miles and basically like, you know, you're nobody. You were never meant to be phenomenal fucking voice he's acting. A broken man. man. And I thought the uh, the artwork and his like just the visual portrayal matched the voice so well and the personality. Like you're like, nah, that's a seamless. Is there anything he can't do? When he first comes up and uh, it's him and Gwen Stacy and they're fighting that vulture, that version of like the um, Victorian esque vulture, Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, type. The Leonardo- yeah. yeah, and like he's basically just going at him and everything that's coming out. I'm like, yo, I like the way that he fights. And then. He takes off his mask and uh, he's about to bite into home dude's neck and then he immediately has to stop. I thought they were going to come back to that. Like maybe he needed to uh, uh, drain energy, but they did not. But it was enough to let you know off the rip. This dude is not pure. I mean, damn, he is in the most important part of that movie, basically. That that whole chase part. How good was that chasing? It was everything that I didn't know I wanted to see and didn't see. Because normally, I don't read Spider-Man as much as y'all, but I read them certain issues. Normally, the spiders, they're never antagonistic toward each other. That's not how that works. So to see 2099 being, like, that aggressive, and to have all the other spider people behind because I just pulled this Wikipedia list up. Oh, these spiders in this movie, bro. It's a lot, isn't it? They don't even have them all. They say Superior Spider-Man is in there. Uh, to Drew's point, it was a visual overload a lot of times from, yeah. from the art style consistently switching up uh, to the, the color palettes. And when they got to the Spider Society, which I think is a great name, I was trying to keep up with all like the Easter eggs and cameos. And it was just like too much. It was like, oh, shit, there goes Ben Riley. Oh, man, there goes the Web Slinger. Ooh, T-Rex Spider-Man. Ooh, Cat Spider-Man. Buddy um, Spider-Man. Andy Samberg yeah. was Ben Riley, Which is so good. I love his one line uh, when you first meet him. Don't, what does he say? He's like, don't worry, I'm over here thinking about my troll past. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect pose. <laughs> if anyone has anything, we'll come back to Spider-Man 2099. I want to talk about, because Walt brought up the list of, of Spider-Man cameos. Was there any particular cameo or Easter egg that you caught, or maybe one that just like caught you by surprise or blew your mind? What's What's the one Spider Man that uh, you had watched from Disney Plus? It was right after the Spider Man cartoon, like Spider Man Unlimited. Oh uh, yes, yeah, Spider Man Unlimited. The Spider Man Unlimited was really cool. The see. animated spectacular Spider Man that was showing up was really great, fun. and the fact they kept them in like their original art style was so cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say Lego Spider Man was such a good little cameo. And the fact that, like, he's, you know, so adorable. You're you're one of our best, Peter Parker. The handicapped Spider-Man. Or the spider, the handicapped Spider-Girl was pretty awesome. Yeah, her joke was pretty good, too. Yeah, because she said something, and the next thing you know, she started doing Spider-Man stuff. She goes, uh, she says, uh, what did she say? she's like, Miles, do you think that Spider-Man use uh, our jokes jokes as a crutch? And she's like, get it, crutch? And she fucking jumped out the, <laughs> the chair and ki- yeah, whip, whips out a crutch and starts hitting him. They're like, all right. Life, any uh, particular Easter eggs or, or Spider-Man cameos? There was one moment when it was the Hello, Peter. 
from Doc Ock, that actor. I did like that. That was that was a very brief moment. Alfred Molina. Yes, yeah, Alfred yeah, Molina. Yeah. Good job, yeah. I'm surprised no one has said this one yet, but Donald Glover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As Prowler blew me away. Obviously, for the, the reason that it's fucking Donald Glover, first of all. The fact that he's in a Prowler suit because he was Prowler in the, um, um, in the MCU in movies. The MCU. I mean, it, it was like, oh, damn. And he's getting to meet Miles. And Miles has that interaction w- with him where he's staring at him. And he's like, you know, it's rude to stare. I was like, damn, that's, that's dope. But the other layer to it, too, is this movie sometimes looked so real. It didn't look at a place that Donald Glover was there. Like there was a few No, because even when you write, when they even when they intersected all those different clips from the other mm-hmm. movies, none of that felt weird. It just was like that movie flows really well. Mm-hmm. Did it feel long to you guys? Like the movie was two and tw- uh, two no. hours twenty minutes. Did it ever feel like dragging at any no. moment? No, no. I just knew the end was coming by the time the end was coming. Yeah. Honestly, I thought that movie was going to end when Miles gets into, you know, quote unquote, his universe. I thought because they felt like they were giving a speech, you know, like the, the voiceover was going on. I was like, oh, this is where it's going to end. It's going to pick up with them hunting him down. But the fact we got like 30 more minutes of the movie and got to meet evil Miles. Oh, it's like the days of the future past. Like, yes. Yeah. That's, That's a good like, reference. Oh, no. So it didn't feel it never dragged for anyone. Right? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was trying to think of like what they could actually because that comment was made before the movie. Like, gosh, this is going to be such a long movie. But what could they possibly cut out? Nothing. It felt like that movie had a lot of room to breathe and they took advantage of it. Like to open up with Gwen Stacy, I thought was a pretty interesting choice because it's like we're going to we're not going to give you miles just yet. We're going to go ahead and set things up and, and get all the pieces on, on the chessboard. And we're just going to focus on how badass Gwen Stacy is. Gwen Stacy might be my second favorite. She was phenomenal in this, man. Like, this, I felt like she was just as integral to, yes. like, uh, had a major spotlight. This story this doesn't world. work without the three people, the main three characters from the previous movie. And I was so happy to see Peter B. Yeah. Show up, man. In some slippers. In a pink furry uh, bathrobe. I mean, come on. No, nah, that dude was out here just being, like, the world's most... <laughs> Dad is the dad by <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah, uh, Drew. Any thoughts on uh, Gwen Stacy or Peter B. Parker? Um, no, I, I'm on more or less the the side of Miles of just like you know they didn't tell him anything. They're like, oh, you could you didn't visit oh, me betrayal. because yeah, that that's the part that sucked. Where you're like, dang, this entire time they knew who he was and like what he was capable of. It's very un Spider Man like to do that. Hmm. I was like, damn, everybody is going to hold on to the secret and, and treat Miles like he don't belong? That's what a good villain does. Mm. It's going to be real curious to see his, um, his redemption in the next one when he realizes that he made a mistake. Just because he made a bad mistake doesn't mean that those other things that happen are mistakes. Yeah. You can't go and replace a dead version of you. Like, this never works in any movie when people do this. This exactly. never, this, this is always bad. Miles should have looked at Miguel like, that sounds like a you problem. Because you did that. Yeah. I didn't replace the old Miles. <laughs> and I would have looked at all the other Spider Man like, I cannot believe y'all would follow this. Like, no one, the thousands you, of you. But you know why they're following that? Hmm, why? Because they don't have a 616 Spider Man there. I know they do. They uh, the six one six is the is it in Peter B? It's a uh, Peter B. He's not a six one six. I swear to you, when Gwen was going through the thing, she put six one six, and that she ended up in his place. Why you looked that up? How do you guys feel about the ending? Like the fact that we're getting, um, did it catch any of you off guard? Like, how do you feel about this alternate take on Miles and you know him being the Prowler? I mean, obviously, it was a shock. Uh, I I totally forgot oh, that there was a act- shocker. Probably, <laughs> that's a joke. I totally forgot that they were going to do a part two. So when it ended, I was like, "Oh, damn it!" But I thought it ended on a on a pretty good spot. Drew, what did you feel about like the the canon event and then breaking down or using that as like as the means to explain like multiverse and basically incursions? I was like, "All right, so this is basically oh, like their that's incursions." The word I was that's for. okay. Yeah. Real quick, I did notice something on here before we jump on that. Drew, let me just cut oh, you no, off real good, quick. And what if you remember when Doctor Strange went crazy in that um dimension because he kept going, he kept trying to say that woman or whatnot. Uh huh. And he started, he started glitching. 
in the story. They took those glitches from that and put them in this because of all the multiverse stuff from all these other mm. different things. So that movie ties into the larger theme going on with Marvel right now with multiversal stuff. Kind of makes more sense why Donald Glover would be in it. Mm. Yeah, because since they've been messing around in the multiverse in so many different dimensions so much, the multiverse is broke, but it's not Miles Morales' fault. I don't know. It's really like, um, well, I mean, they, they mentioned that in this movie. Uh, yeah, he says it. Yeah, he's like, uh, what, what, he says something about well, that Spider-Man that was hanging out with that Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Don't even get me started on them. And uh, Gwen is like, it sounds like he needs to get his doctor license revoked. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's like a that. 616 one right there. Well, actually, well, I went ahead and looked it up. And according to Into the Spider-Verse Wiki, Benjamin B. Parker, Earth 616. I promise you. Is this, wait, hold up. Is this well-deserved? <laughs> Can we give Drew a round of applause? Absolutely, ball? man. Give, give, give him some gunshots is what you need to do, man. <laughs> do I have any gunshots? What's the closest thing I got to gunshots on this thing? You got a kazoo? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do have a Spider-Man sound bite. Was an animated Spider-Man, did he have a cameo? Like the, You know which one I'm talking about, the 90s Fox. He probably did. Uh, but back to my question. You know what, Drew? Let me ask you this question, actually. Who do you got in a fight between canon events versus incursion versus the way uh, uh, the Ancient One explained the multiverse in Endgame? Which one do you enjoy more out of those <laughs> three? Because <laughs> it's basically all the same shit. The ancient one in um, or, in uh, Infinity War. Infinity War explained it, so I was like, okay. Yeah, it's wildly simple the way she explained it. Fair she enough. drew it out. It was yeah. just like, if you do this, it destroys this, this, and this. You're right. She made that very idiot proof. But I thought the canon event in this one, it's a great shout out to comic books, like the whole canon thing, and like you know how hypercritical we fans use can that be. Word, yep. That's what I'm saying. If the first one was a love letter to Spider Man, this one was like, okay, this is a, a really detailed love letter to Spider Man comics. And Spider-Man fans. When he was like, we can't break canon. I was like, every comic fan is like, sure enough, can Spider-Man. <laughs> I'd be hating that, man. Like, they do know that these people are paid professionals. They can write into the canon. They can add to the canon anytime they want to. Life, any other uh, characters that we need to mention? Let me go through the IMDb real quick. Because I feel like the, there's plenty we missed out. Gwen, uh, or the parents, uh, Miles' parents, love them. Especially his mom. I have a note here. I wrote Brian Tyree Henry talking to Miles when when him and Miles, but Miles as Spider Man are talking, and Miles is like, oh, "Well, maybe get off the kid's ass." <laughs> 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 is Brian Tyree Henry just not? I mean, the dude is amazing. Like in the same way that I was watching this, I'm like, man, Oscar Isaac is phenomenal. Whether he's in front of the camera or doing a voice. Brian Tyree Henry has such like a warmth to him, like a, like a relatability. And you're like, like you can believe that he's like this dad that cares about this fictional character. That and the mom, like yeah, both phenomenal. of them. I, I love it. The moment when she, when they were explaining like, oh, he got a B in Spanish or whatever. And she snaps her fingers and the Dominican flag pops up for like a half a second. <laughs> It really felt like a motion comic at times. I think actually in one scene, I, I had motion comic written down here somewhere. Spider Punk's whole existence is a motion comic. From like the little dialogue boxes, you know, like to, to for the inner monologues and then even like to use like to explain things, you know, the little, the little asterisks like, oh, this means that. The vulture guy, when he was saying goodbye or something, yeah. they put it up in English in that, in that font. I, I never felt at any point that it, it felt stagnant. Um, well, there was definitely slow moments, I think. Like, one of my favorite, like, slower kind of, like, let it kind of breathe moments was when Miles and Gwen first finally link up. And when they're on that... Um, the ledge hanging backwards. Oh, that oh, was oh, so Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. The, the Williamsburg uh, uh, Bank Tower or whatever. Yeah. When Gwen is walking on that ledge and she starts going upside down and the camera moves upside down with her, and then you realize, like, they're having this sweet, nice, like, catch-up moment... Very cute and flirty. And you're like, these motherfuckers are hanging upside down. But like, then they pan out oh and God. the yep. city is upside down next to the water. And you can still see them sitting, you know, correctly, I guess, so in that shot. Not knowing 45 minutes, 45 minutes later, they were going to betray him. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one moment, too, between the, when he was like going invisible or something. And it almost looked like the Tobey Maguire, Kristen Dernst. 
Kristen oh, Dunst kiss. Because yeah. he's kind of, what is he hanging upside down and she's not? She's kind of just standing there. And I thought they were going to kiss. I'm like, oh, Spider Man 1. <laughs> They're going to kiss. Speaking about that scene, that scene was actually in one of the, um, I think when Miguel O'Hara is talking about the canon event and, you know, they have like the web and it's like all you're like, oh, the Spider-Man cartoon. They had that one scene in one of the little webs. Mm. Uh, well, you brought up that we literally were watching the uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man one movie today. And the Uncle Ben death scene is right there. Uncle Ben got popped. And then I was like, OK, enough of this, man. It's like, OK, because <laughs> I have forgot, I literally I forgot that he I got killed in that movie. Oh, okay. I wrote motion comic because when they bring up Amazing Spider-Man 190, which is the infamous death of Captain <laughs> Stacy, oh, yeah. it is basically a motion comic. If the first, I remember thinking the first one, like, wow, they just took like a comic book and how I read it and put it on the big screen. This one was like, let's really lean into like letting, reminding people this is like all based on some comic books. I'm fairly certain that Sony has patented that animation style. Hmm. So nobody else can use that kind of animation other than Into the Spider-Verse. That's smart for them. Because if not, we'll get inundated with that. And I don't want to see a bunch of people do stuff in that style. I'm going to say this much. This movie was very ADHD friendly. It was like, (laughs) if you want a bunch of shit going on in this movie, (laughs) boom. All right. Like, especially Gwen, when she talks to her dad, there was a couple scenes where I'm like, I can't tell if this is... 3D animated or paper mache or a combo of different mediums. What? It, what you know? What that really looks like? You remember that old school um, video that that take on me video? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like they all look like it's that. A but like, filter too. They yeah. all look like that, but like a thousand times better. If the guy who drew that particular movie video never stopped drawing, mm. <laughs> only got better. Take on me, inspiring to this day. Yeah. Drew, what did you think about the music? Because that was something me and you talked about last uh, the, the day before was that i'm gonna be honest with you i didn't even pay attention to the music like i know that i was hyping up this like post malone everything but like nothing like i would like i was so focused on like what was happening that i was just like i guess the loop y- y- you two and me and drew were discussing if we were going to get another you know ex- excuse the corniness but like smash hit right like you will this is a guarantee I don't feel. I feel like if, if if there was one, we would have heard it. Well, they played that song a few a couple times in the first movie. I don't know that they Sunflower. played. Yeah, I don't know that they this played a song more than once in this one. I think it goes without saying there was no comparable Sunflower song for this one at all. There was good music, but I uh, yeah I agree. No, the music was in my opinion in this one more of like an ambiance. Like it fit all the scenes just right. Like the uh, uh, all the Spider Gwen uh, scenes in the beginning. She had like kind of like a electronic but like electro punk vibe to it miguel o'hara obviously had a bunch of awesome synth sounds miles morales i think he op- the first time you see miles morales it's like a rock him song you know so th- it hit all the right cues but i don't think there was that one standout song hmm. like sunflower it's yeah there's no summer soundtrack exactly you remember when we went to go first go see into the spider verse we played sunflower all the way back home like yeah. a 25 it's minute like on drive a, a playlist back to shared. back to back to back <laughs> yes i don't think there was that one big song that came out of this movie i didn't realize that people listen to that post malone song 18 million times the song is cool but <laughs> don't you but well, be, please I'm, please you've got we've million gone, we've gone 56 minutes without arguing and i just want this to be a, a podcast full look, of love please. Get, look it's all oh, love, he's gonna but do it he's gonna it, do it is it 18 billion or whatever it takes to get diamond streams? What did Spider Punk say? It's a metaphor for capitalism. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Wives killing her right now with all the references. Look, the Reddit. So the I'll Reddit. be honest with you. Spider Punk to me really gave me a headache visually. Cause I because you know he's always like changing his really erratic and which goes well with his personality. But I was like, please throw some captions on this motherfucker because I can't understand the jokes. I can't like just I hear say, it. That's because you don't speak bruv good enough, man. I You're speak right. bruv. You're right. You're right. <laughs> we have not mentioned specifically any Miles Morales scenes. What was your favorite scene of Miles Morales? And I'll, I'll go to Drew first. The, the one where Miguel O'Hara has him on the ropes. Miles is like, nah. I'm tired of telling people telling me what to do. Like, I'm going to do Miles. That was inspirational. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. And he's just basically, pow, pow. Like, you're like, damn, yeah. he freaking killed it. What does he say? He's like, I got all your spider people coming after me. And he had his, like, hand on his, like, arm absorbing his energy. And I'm going to do this. That was definitely, like, 
damn, Miles is coming into his own. Blythe, what about you? Favorite Miles Morales scene? I'd probably say towards the beginning with him and Gwen, like kind of swinging through the city. I thought that was really cute because I don't think they got a moment like that in the first one. So for them to meet up for the first time in a while, be able to, he's, you know, able to show all his new tricks. Well, what about you? When he tells his mother <laughs> that he's Spider Man. Oh my God. That is my favorite Spider Man. There are other scenes in there. Grant, obviously, this is a Miles Morales movie, so there's a lot of scenes that are really good. But when he lets his mother know that he is Spider Man, and then calamity ensues. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a co sign with you on that one. <laughs> there's no top in that one. Yeah, yeah, for real. I'm so glad I went first. Yeah, I'm so glad I went before that <laughs> yeah, one. I'm so glad I went first. Well, if you can't, ladies and gents. How come I didn't get my applause? Oh, right. 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 I, I was being a hater. I was being a hater. I was being a you hater. You gave Andrew his applause. Nah, you get that. You got that. You got that. You got that. That's well enough, deserved. man. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it does get annoying after like three seconds. What did Evil Miles say? He's like, I'm Miles Morales. I was like, oh, damn. He get he knows oh, Spanish man. in this one. Yo, he <laughs> roll rolls at R. It was a strong roll. He had the, the, the corn rolls. Did anyone notice the back piece of his like uh, um, cape was like uh, uh, the Basquiat crown, which I think was uh, uh, imagery they used in like the first one with the spray paint. Might be looking too deep into it. All I'm saying is that Miles is the is the prowler in this universe, and Uncle Aaron's probably like you know his uh, Alfred, you know his tech guy mm. sets him up. So with the he jobs. knew that his. So when he first sees his nephew, he knows that he's an imposter. I don't think he knew off the rip. But I think by the time that he starts asking questions, like, can you tell me the plan again? And he's acting funky. I think that was it. And how hard was that, that line? I'm paraphrasing, but if you don't let me go, my dad, you know, our dad dies. And he goes, not nah, my dad. No, his dad been dead. Do you know how evil you got to be to look you in the face and be like, I don't care about your dad. That is also your dad. And what, you know, that is not really. I mean, we're talking multiversal schedules here. That. All right. I want every single <laughs> multiverse version of me to care about my dad as much as I care about him. I mean, yes, but what if um, your dad died because there was no Spider-Man on that world? Because Miguel O'Hara may be correct in that statement that maybe this Spider-Man is mm -hmm. supposed to be here. But then you would have thought that another swipe a bit would have happened to lead another Spider-Man there. That ending sets this next one up so well. Like the fact that off the rip, you know, you know, and it's not going to be like a lot of setup, too. I think that's what makes me really excited for this next one is that they've already got a lot of the setup out the way. And I'm expecting it just kind of be like, you know, let's hit the ground running. I feel like Spider-Man fans are going to be eating pretty good these next probably couple of years. Um, I read an article today on Variety, and they, uh, I guess, interviewed or talked to uh, the producer, Amy Pascal, uh, And she's already confirmed that <laughs> she's... A, well, it, you got something to say about Amy Pascal? I mean, we'll just... Okay, so for another <laughs> podcast. All right. Definitely, th there's some history there between Walt and, uh, well, not and really. Amy. It just depends on what you're about to take on the sheet. Okay, well, I was going to say that they interviewed her, and she's already saying that they've got a uh, Spider-Man woman spinoff. I would imagine Jessica Drew, but they she just said Spider-Man woman spinoff. Um, a live-action Miles Morales movie is in the works, and they're also doing a fourth Spider-Man movie with, obviously, Tom Holland and Zendaya. Do you want to see a Miles Morales like live action? Because I feel no, like I'm fine no, with no. it. No. Why no on your part, Drew? What do I need to see it for? That's what I, how I feel. I, like this I one is already perfect. True. Yeah. I don't need anything else. It's kind of like when they keep making all these DC movies, but we know that if they would just let the people who did the DC animation run the actual DC live films, mm -hmm. then everything would work out fine. People like Amy Pasquale have to kind of keep making stuff to justify she's only put, put it like this well she only still has that sony job because she was the person who brought in spider-man in the first place i think so that's why she's still there other than that she only deals in spider-man stuff so the san francisco uh, uh scene when spot goes into like the real world and he's talking to that lady that, uh, behind the counter that's a venom reference right yeah yes. okay got it got it yeah because she worked in the store that was below where venom was that got it so this movie was basically sony like all these spider-man rights that we got we are flexing it wasn't venom, venom in the little jeep too in the in this movie i don't know he was in the little spider-man jeep and they kind of drove off really quick 
No, I think I think that Spider Man cheat was like a sentient Spider Man being, which I thought was pretty yeah. funny. So no on the Miles they're, Morales. Yeah, and they're uh, never giving up those Spider Man rights. No, so, no, not after never. how much they made. Life, you're also no on the Miles Morales. Yeah, live well, I I could see how it's definitely going to happen, just because that's the only way that these big studios are funding new movies is if there's some kind of tie-in to a previous franchise. It's the yeah. only way they can financially justify. But that's it. laziness, though. Because is there anything else you want to say about Spider Man before we go into like a tangential <laughs> thing about just movies in general and like the lazy narrative about like that you have to have like these franchises to fund all this stuff? Now, now we're just having fun. We're getting close to the end, okay. anyways. So my main argument is this. Let's say you're um, I'm Walter Gant. Matter of fact, no. What's the movie studio name? I can just run with it. I am Walter Sony. So Walter Sony buys, I don't know, 40 scripts a year. Just 40 fresh ideas every year. And I make three of them. And I, matter of fact, I don't even make three of them. I buy 40 scripts, put them in a drawer. And then make a bunch of Spider-Man movies. And what else does Sony make? Oh, I make Jumanji movies. I do that for sure. So I make, I'm in the Jumanji business. But I'm basically in the business of properties, but I don't really have to be. Because I got 40 scripts in there that guess what? 10 of those could probably be new properties. Or at least 10 of them could have a damn sequel. But instead, they don't make movies. That's why I like something like John Wick is like an anomaly. But now they've made four of those. I loved and enjoyed. But how many other John Wicks are sitting in someone's drawer? Yeah. A lot of them. Probably. A lot of them. And they're only going to get, they're not going to get funded just it, because that's the way the modern movie or the, the big though, studios, that's the way they, they choose to make money. Because they could have just funded the movie. It's not like it's taking them more than $20 million to make a John Wick movie. I mean, I think, it, it did. Have you ever seen uh, Matt Damon on Hot Ones? I didn't see him on Hot Ones. Well, but he, he broke it he, he down. He broke it down, yeah. What's it was like name? that one clip of like, you have to have two, at least $250 million in order to, 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 for a movie studio to bring a movie to the theaters. That seems crazy to me because guess what? Every movie is not going to make $250 million. This is why people say they have superhero fatigue and be bitching about superhero movies. But that's not a superhero issue. That's a laziness of people. If you have lazy, non-talented um, people who nepotism their way up the ladder deciding what we get to watch. This is what the fuck we get. And it's not like I don't didn't enjoy what I just seen today. I, I'm a comic book person. I like these movies. Sorry about that, man. <laughs> oh, you're good. So we are hyper, no, on the live action Miles Morales movie. Um, I think my whole point was that Spider-Man fans, there's a lot of things to look forward to. Spider-Woman animated movie, judging by this Miles Morales um, live action, fourth Spider-Man movie, and uh, something me and Drew are most excited for, Spider-Man uh, video game later this <laughs> fall. So, uh, Spider-Man fans, we're looking good out of here. We pretty much touched on everything I wanted to. We can't get through everything, you know. Um, but I don't want to just spoil the whole damn movie either. Nah, bro. People will listen to these episodes expecting us to go all out. Look, we are not Kevin Smith. You are not about to hear the whole totality <laughs> of a film. Final review, parting words, any last things you want to say about the movie? Uh, Drew, I'll look to you to kick us off. No, it's just the movie was amazing. I kind of want to see it like three more times to make sure that I got all the information correct. This is definitely a multi-watch movie yes. just for the Easter eggs. Uh, I'll be watching this multiple when they come on a streamer or something, but I ain't going back to movies to go see it. There's too many movies come out this year. I, I want, next time y'all go see it, can you pay attention to when the movie first starts? There was something that popped up on the right-hand side of the screen. I do remember that. I, I, saw I would that assume that well. was the blob, though, or the spot guy. Huh. I don't, it was before anything started. Yeah, it's right in the right-hand corner. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. Ooh, listeners, look, if, if anyone watches it the second time before we do, write us in, all right? Write us in, and if you can identify this thing that life this mystery thing that life brought up like it's not, it's right right in the, you didn't see it no nah, i didn't see it that's right it was on the right hand corner but enough of that i, I give the movie an a short and sweet life any uh last words about yeah, this I mean, movie 10 out of 10 it is one of those movies that you're gonna watch probably 10 times and find something new each and every time 100 percent. writing's good animation fantastic that's why they patented it it seems like they managed to continue to tell the story of spider-man in a really fresh way and I'm glad to see that Miles is kind of like the figurehead for it all. You know, great power, great responsibility thing has been, especially for comic fans, beating it's hammered into the ground. Exactly. And the fact that Miles is the face of it 
and he's literally going up against everyone and like the whole canon of Spider-Man and, and uh, the spotlight that, that's been put on him. I thought that first movie set the bar at an impossible height, but this one just like easily just clicked. Yeah, we got it from here. So I'm really excited to see what this um, what this uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse does. With that being said, uh, listeners, look, we just got out of theater. We tired. All right. I think we touched on everything that immediately comes to the forefront of our mind. Uh, if you guys are anything like us, tomorrow morning, we're going to be like, shit, we didn't even mention XYZ. We didn't even bring up that scene. So this is where you guys come in. All right. Help us continue the conversation. If we missed anything, any glaring scenes, moments, characters that you feel like we just didn't do enough justice, write into the show, right? Write into the shortboxjacks at gmail.com or send us a DM on Twitter or Instagram. Let us know what you thought about this review and this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the movie as much as we did. Life, Walt, Drew, thank you guys so much for hopping on the pod with me. Thank being you. Being such good movie co Thank you for having me. Shortbox Nation, be well, take care, and like I always love to say, continue to make mine and yours Shortbox. We'll talk to you next week, all right? Peace. Thank you.